last episode, we used the payloader to drop the truck back on the Sherman frame, body, tracks. This episode, we connect the two, and it's all pretty epic. You're gonna have to watch. And also good news, we've got new merch with the Shermanator on it. Um, definitely uh, check out all the t-shirts and mugs and backpacks and everything that we put that on and get your own. Help support projects like this, because um, pretty epic. Here we go. <laughs> it to dig black muck and the thing sat for 10 years and fired right up. So the coolest thing is the steering wheel actually works. It's connected to the tracks. Come on girl, more power! In the last episode you've seen us take care of a bunch of stuff on the Sherman part itself. A bigger engine, automatic transmission, winch, brakes, and a bunch of other stuff. Seats, console, shifting, steering, wiring. This episode, we connect the two. I've got hydraulics hooked up to lift the thing. I've got it running, exhaust, uh, shifter linkages happening. This is this is Bigfoot competition here, isn't it? It is. Okay, so we got it in. Just beat the storm. We got like two feet of snow. So we, if we left it where it was, it'd be there until spring. So got it just in time. Um, so thanks for Phil for letting us use the machine and Kevin for helping me out with that. In the meantime, I did measure wrong. I, I started my frame or my hole right where it bolts to the Z-beam in the back and I should have had it forward more, but that actually puts the intake and the exhaust kind of right underneath the fuel tank. So thinking about it, it's not a bad thing. We're just gonna slide the whole thing ahead. I'm gonna cut that rear shackle off the frame rail to slide the truck ahead. We'll get Vince to just weld a little bracket that comes down um, and then we'll will pinch the I-beam so we can still tilt the truck up and down. To be able to move it up and down with the four cylinder in the front, um, the frame rails are too narrow. Um, regardless, if we move this ahead, the steering box won't be in between our, our steering anymore. So it's two options. Um, might go to VNR and see if there's an old tractor there with hydraulic steering, because we can run the hydraulic pump through the steering and then we can get rid of this box altogether and mount something solid to here on a cylinder that just goes back and forth. Problem with that is it becomes really strong and we don't want to put too much tension on the brakes because uh, keeping in mind it was meant to be done manually by a person who hadn't eaten properly in months and um, was scared shitless when they're driving the tank. So to have a hydraulic cylinder doing it, we will probably burn the brake bands out prematurely. So I think just talking about that now, I'll probably use a Silverado box and just shorten it a little bit. And this frame wheel will probably leave alone. We'll probably just cut the C's off on the inside. And then the other one will, will move the frame rail over and just work on the rad support. That way the four cylinder will be slightly off center. Don't tell anybody. I don't really like that, but the turbo is kind of to the driver's side anyway. Yeah, so I don't want the turbo obstructing my view. I really want a nice, comfortable driving experience. So we'll just put the engine off center a little bit, and then we'll still be able to tilt the whole truck up and work on anything, everything underneath. So that being said, enough yapping, let's get into it. Here we go.
Okay, so did a bunch of stuff just off camera because it's just boring stuff. I just cut the top of the I-beam off so that I could get this piece over top. Drilled a three quarter inch hole that lines up with the hole in there. I took the drill and drilled through the frame. So uh, now this piece will go and get welded on top of this piece. So the L bracket that I put is the same width as the I-beam. So now I can run the frame on the inside and this L bracket on the outside. Weld that to the hitch, the back. You can see where I grinded it there. And now it'll be nice and strong for when I tilt. So we'll just put one bolt in the back there. Um, it'll be sandwiched between the two. And when we hit something in the back, it'll transfer to the whole frame um, rather than just fold that little uh, piece of steel in there. Um, so uh, I don't film a whole lot because it's dark. I'm usually in the, in the way and too many sparks at the cameras and dirty up the lenses. Um, so, and it is really just time consuming and boring grinding every edge so that it welds nice and whatever. Um, just, uh, we'll get to the more exciting part. We just got to get this stuff out of the way. So here we go. Okay. So fast wanted to help us out with a proper fueling system for it. Who are we to say no to that? Mainly because that fuel in that tank was in a swamp for 10 years. It's probably full of water, probably not the best grade for our engine, but Fuel's really expensive. There's a lot of fun in that tank yet so fast. We'll get rid of the air in the fuel and we'll also separate the water. So we're still got clean fuel going to the engine. We need 70 PSI to fire the common rail that runs through the cylinder head and the injectors fire off of. If you've got a Cummins, you only need to supply the lift pump to the P pump. That's only 15 PSI. And then the power strokes, uh, any Huey system would be about the same as this. So definitely check out their website and everything that they have to offer. We're gonna use this one. There we go. All right, so I got the fast mounted. Um, out of the way, but still, you know, you gotta have your fast canisters hanging down just a little bit. So this is their uh, TSIUM, 165 gallon per minute, signature titanium series, and it's meant specifically for mechanical injectors. So it's got a little oil pressure sensor um, to actually turn the pump on because you don't want the pump running without the engine running because with the mechanical injectors, um, we can fill the cylinders up with diesel. We'll show you how to wire that up in the next video when we wire the whole truck but I need to get it running um, as is for now because I need to uh, get the hydraulic pump working so that I can lift the truck up. Ran into an issue with uh, the local gas station. They always filled my expired propane tanks, but I guess they got busted. And now I see their propane filling station is gone. <laughs> so I don't think that they are very happy and I am not either because I can't find <laughs> the proper tank. Got one on order, but it's, it's gonna take a couple weeks. So, and I was gonna lift the front of the truck up with the forklift, instead we'll just get the whole hydraulic system working um, and then uh, worry about the forklift later. First things first, we have to change that Vickers pump rotation, that's a vein pump, and I, it came on the right camshaft on the four cylinder, but I had to put it on the left on, on the V6. So what happens is now it's spinning backwards and it's sucking instead of blowing and that's not good. So um, we'll flip that pump around, show you guys how to do that. We'll mount that, then we'll get into the rest of the hydraulics. Here we go. So this is the Vickers vein pump. A um, little diaphragm, I think, on top of the uh, circle and it spins and then the veins go in and out. You can see this arrow, this is pointing down. We just have to flip the center plate over so the arrow's pointing up. Softish, it'll be fine. All of them still seem loose, so I think the pump is still good. That's good. 
So all you're doing is you're changing your in and your out. So rather than it being this way, it's this way. It's pretty cool set system actually. This gets torqued too. If you ever watch a video and they say this gets torqued to manufacture specs, they're not torquing it at all. If they, if they were, they tell you what that torque spec is. <laughs> they're just doing it for show and they're hitting it with an impact. <laughs> manufacture spec. Leave room for the chain. <laughs> it's not. Not that much fun, actually. It's kind of a pain. Every time you go to grab something, I'm like, oh, I forgot that. Open that up quite a bit. Crap. See, this is so my day gets ruined. I'm gonna take the pump back off again. I gotta slide this gear way back. Do you heat up one side, try to open it, and it might, might slide down. Pump's probably no good now. <laughs> <laughs> I knocked just enough out of the pump that it'll work the power steering properly. <laughs> These are the brackets that will hold the lower part of the cylinder in the IV. I'm just gonna hit the grinder and uh, clean up one edge so that they can all sit the same. Then I'll drill the hole in the same spot. I got the perfect spot for that. So I made all my grinding size here. Oh, actually, actually, you know what? I'm not gonna work underneath that table there. Uh, I'll find another spot. That was a good idea at the time but I should really put up my, uh... I should really put up my snow stopper flips on that side of the shop. <laughs> anyway, I'll keep grinding. Here we go. Okay, so this is where the brackets will sit in the IV. I want the cylinders a little bit lower so that they're pointing up. And you don't need to measure, just roughly, that's the circle. Drill a pilot hole and then transfer the pilot holes over to the next so that the height is the same. So I can use one side to do the opposite side, and then I can use this one, this one, for the other side on the other two. Make sense? It's very straightforward. And drill a one inch hole and we're good. Here we go. Because I got the cylinder down there, and those brackets really are welded to, it's pushing up against the I-beam, and it's sandwiched in between. It can't ever go anywhere. You could almost leave them loose, and it would still push the truck up. Welded them solid. <laughs> These ones are a little bit more important. So up on the I-beam on the top, or the, I keep calling it I-beam, L-channel. We'll call it L. Um, so we got the angle coming up at the top. So all I'm doing is welding this plate um, underneath that and then drilling the hole straight through so the hole goes through this and that plate and the frame and then we're good. So a couple things to keep in mind. Um, these holes have to line up. Uh, we did pretty good. I just stuck, I, I had to stick the bolt in there so the holes line up down there. Um, 
I had to make sure that the cylinder itself was far enough away from the frame so that it cleared. When I was driving my service truck, if I didn't put my boom down all the way, um, you could tell instantly it was shaking and rattling. So what, what we do not want is for those cylinders to keep the truck from going all the way down on the bottom. So what, what I'll do is I'll extend one cylinder just a tiny bit, maybe like uh, an inch, uh, not even, um, probably half an inch. And that way when I weld it uh, where, or drill the hole wherever it is, then um, when the body's down, it's actually sitting on the wood. Not, not a huge deal because we could always shim up the wood more, but what I'd like is to even be able to pull the truck down a little bit and then that's one more. Um, it'll be bolted in the front, cylinder in the middle, and bolted in the back. Then we've got six points holding it down, um, whereas before it was only four. Uh, that'll keep everything from bouncing around. So um, first things we'll do is uh, stick a pin through the end of the cylinder, mark the hole there, drill that, and I can put this plate right up against it, drill straight through this plate, take that plate off, spin it around, the hole should be in the same spot, weld it, and then the cylinder is in place. Here we go. Okay, so we got the cylinders mounted there. That's all good. Uh, waiting for a chain. We got, I got chain uh, that fits around here now, but they didn't have a link, so they had to order a connecting link. So I got to cut that extra one off yet. That'll connect that together. In the meantime, I can hook up my valve body. This was a power pack that came off a little two-cylinder uh, engine that was uh, no good from VNR. Didn't make a video on it because it was the engine was just no good but the valve body was so we don't need this pump uh if possible maybe we can put this one on the four cylinder in the front but i need this valve body so very simple hydraulics we got an in and an out and basically it's open center meaning that the pump is turning all the time and oil is constantly going through here and when you pull on one of these handles it diverts the flow to either this one or this one and when it puts pressure on one side it opens the other one so that that can go to return um, you can't get the in and the out backwards because right there is the relief valve so if you deadhead it or the cylinder goes to the top the oil has to be able to keep moving because otherwise you just blow a hose so um, you know, that's what that high screeching noise is so there's your basic hydraulic lesson for open center hydraulics we're going to put this handle in the step right here um, I want to be able to have the engine running and just pull on the handles here if we put it in here and take the handles off so we can take put the handles on whenever we need to use it shouldn't be that often but I uh, can't have it accidentally coming on when we don't want it to because if it's bolted in the front and those cylinders activate it'll just fold the whole truck in half so um, at the same time we need a safety to keep the truck up what I'm thinking is uh, a pole that goes, I'll cut a hole through here and uh, go right up maybe into the center of that I-beam and then a handle that I can take and flip up um, and then that rod will put up a support bar so I can drop it down probably on the, um, the cab mounts or the, that mount right there. That way I don't have to crawl underneath the truck. I thought about locks on the cylinder as it comes down, but this is just safer because we don't have to go underneath the truck at all to lift it up and secure it safely. So we'll start by cutting this uh, open and putting the valve body in there. And then uh, we'll run to VNR and start grabbing a bunch of hoses. Here we go. 
Okay, so I cut some L bracket and that will run right from that the main hull over to this I-beam on the outside. That will create my nice seal on the walls on the outside. Super strong, so if anything comes from the tracks, we'll bump into uh, this. Won't bend it, won't do anything. And then I just have a little bit of plate left over from my workbenches that I can just drop on top and then put the valve body right in. These are, these are the perfect height that if I just put them in here, um, they'll be completely sealed and uh, no chance of them actually getting hit. And then uh, I just need to notch this out and then this will, these will support the sides. Super, super simple. <laughs> Here we go. bunch of fittings and hoses and tees and whatnot. I think we can make it all work now. VNR set us up with all the hoses. They have absolutely every fitting that you can imagine. So if you need any hydraulic hoses, definitely check them out. So kind of drew the schematic out. We'll see uh, We'll see how uh, close I got. It's kind of get one, one time shot because these are all high pressure hoses. So here we go. I'm not going to run it with the pump yet though, um, I'm going to shorten one hose just a little bit, make it look a little bit neater, uh, but I'm really happy with how that went. So I unhooked the hoses from the valve body for now. I'm going to lift it with a forklift and just see, I got some more propane. So I'll see nice and easy, nice and slow, see where things end up and then build the brace for it. And then uh, we can start working underneath. So there you go. Oh man, I love it when a plan comes together. That is pretty sick. Of course I am doing it with the forklift. I'll put some safety stands underneath there yet and drop it down on that before I do any work. But it's nice to see it now because I gave myself a little act like I rooted that hose wrong before I fired it up, right? If I do all that with it running and the hydraulics working, then uh, I spill fuel in that everywhere. It's gonna run that different so that it doesn't kink like that. Um, I can get out the exhaust, get the training fluid in there, get the uh, starter and the alternator on there, no problem now. I'm sick of climbing underneath that. I'm not as agile as I used to be. Vince still has a little bit of welding to do on the winch. That's nice and easy to do now. And the shifter hoses. Um, I was gonna route them all the way to the back and then have them hinge at the back, but I can just have them follow the cylinder. So I can just come down here and then go down the cylinder and then the front and shift there. So instead of paying for 30 feet of hoses, I can probably cut that in half, uh, or at least knock 10 feet off per hose times 20. It all adds up. So um, I'm gonna put the safety stands on there and um, start working on my shifter and my brakes. Um, I'm going to put a diverter valve on the brake master and then put two slave cylinders off a clutch uh, underneath these levers so that when I hit the brake, both will squeeze up at the same time. So I've got the brake on the drive shaft and then I've got two brakes on the final drives as well. That should stop it pretty quick. And then I can stand up nicely, get my shifter linkage working, which is that dangling down there. So now I know how to route that and to 
uh, put that in the transmission, know where to hinge that so it doesn't hit the exhaust, doesn't hit anything where it's not supposed to, no chance of getting caught in the drive shaft type of thing. So all these things you got to kind of think about and uh, just seeing it happen is, uh, is pretty awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. I love this thing. And I, and I love the Audi, and I love the F350, and I love the Silverado, which is outside. It's just, this is the coolest job ever, and it, thank, guys, thank you guys for watching to uh, let me do stuff like this and allowing you guys to tag along. Here we go. Okay, so I uh, just put a couple poles underneath the cab mounts there, so they're in the bolt there, welded them down to the bottom just as a precaution, but still got the forklift too, and I trust the forklift, but now we got two. Um, and uh, once the uh, oil is in the hydraulics, then that's uh, another uh, safety. But I'm going to get going on the shift cylinders, and I don't know exactly where to put them. I would like forward to be forward and backward to be backward. And I get it's a little confusing with the cylinders up in there and the lever action and stuff. So I think I know the length of the hoses roughly, um, and I'm going to make them so that they fit on the front. I can hide a little extra um, hose, no problem. And if it's way too long, I just cut the end off and um, put another fitting on it and crimp it. So then uh, it's not too expensive. It, only, it cost me about eight bucks per hose. So um, that gives me a chance to bleed them and make sure that forward is forward because that depends whether I have the cylinder on this side of the shifter or this side of the shifter, you know what I mean? Do you? Do you really? So anyway, back to um, VNR. One hose is just too long, so I'm just gonna put a new end on that, make that a little neater. And then uh, I need another hose for my fuel. Uh, the returns, I gotta get the returns back into the uh, um, tank in the top there. So make those hoses all at once. I need a little bit of steel for the front. So one quick trip now, and then uh, I'll start welding up the brackets to connect the cylinders to the shifter. So here we go. Okay, so we just need to modify these cylinders and put this ball and socket on there because even though I bought this 7 8 bolt to fit through this eye, I was thinking that I could probably shave that handle down to 7 8 round and slide this over top too that way nothing would ever break um, there is a seal here that keeps the oil from leaking out and then there's a seal at the bottom of the piston that slides back and forth so it's okay to weld here um, just don't get this thing red hot and burn that seal out and it's okay to weld here as long as the piston is at the other end and it doesn't get hot so i got the plugs in here to uh, keep the crap out but if you're welding you can weld and then let all the hot air escape no issue, we've had that before. At the very worst, you could probably take this cap off and spin it off and weld the bottom and that, but not necessary for us. Um, again, this is not going to be under a thousand PSI pressure. It'll be under like four. Here we go. Okay, so we're welding this end. Um, I just put grease all over it, that way if I get any splatter, it doesn't burn the chrome because that'll tear out the seal and that will avoid your warranty if they don't notice that you've welded a third arm or third link eye on there. Um, and that's not the way it came from factory. Princess Auto is really good at their returns though. So I'm going to hook this one up before I cut up the other one, just in case, because then I can get my other bucket. Off. So uh, we'll weld this onto here. Oh, and it looks so pretty. Look at that. Nice. Here we go. Okay, we'll sand this down and send it off to powder coating and uh, should be ready in a couple weeks. Uh, we want it to be pretty. Here we go. Okay, so I got to bleed these. So I got these lines made. These are wrapped kind of underneath where I'm going to go and then end up on those two little cylinders there. I got this Spyrex Shell Spyrex oil from Lyles. I think they bought the company that one. And um, it's not hydraulic oil, but it'll work. Um, I've been dumping this in all my fuel tanks and lubricating everything up. This stuff went through the uh, 3406B, loosened up the injection pump, kept everything nice and clean, got the injectors freed up. And we'll probably dump it in the hydraulic tank because that's red oil in there. And this is red as well. So I think what I'm going to do is jam the hose ends in here and then just keep sucking until 
Um, the hose is completely full, and then I'll probably pop it on there. I might have to put a vacuum on it, um, and we can do that if I can't get all the air out, but we'll try this and see what happens. Here we go. Okay, so for bleeding them, I just put the end of the cylinders in a can and suck and pulled it both ways with the ends going in there. Then when the air was out of here, I just um, hooked up one hose and forced the fluid all the way into the hose until I saw it coming out the other end. I did the same, then I just switched the hoses, constantly filling up the one end, um, if that makes any sense. And then I just put uh, the hoses into cans of ATF at the very top and just let it sit for a couple times. The air will go up into the hose, nice and simple, and then just pull and push until it doesn't bounce anymore. Then all the air is out of this and out of the hoses. Then for the um, truck cylinders, I'll do the same thing. I'm just gonna hold the containers of ATF in the fittings as I move the handle back and forth. The bottoms are a pain to get unhooked, but where they're connected to the levers is not. So flip it over so the fittings are up and then attach the hoses lo loosely, squeeze the hoses, put out the last little bit of air and that should be it. Here we go. Like no matter how I look, I can't see it at all. There's like a big giant eye beam underneath. <laughs> so. Now the reason, I couldn't put it on one big stick, is that you can see as I pull one, the distance actually changes on the other one, right? So as I'm putting the one gear forward, the other handle's actually moving a little bit because the distance is changing um, as the throw is. Couldn't use cables because that is a, I needed at least a six inch throw. Um, couldn't use, air because I didn't want it to bounce. I wanted to have some sort of feel whether it's going in or not. Um, so this was basically just it. ATF, I looked up, the viscosity was like 28 and hydraulic oil is 32. So I figured the lower viscosity should move freer. It's still pretty stiff, but in, in ideal situations, we won't be shifting that that often. Uh, I'd still wanted all my gears though. All right, so for the exhaust, we had a lot of recommendations and really good ones too. Um, having them go up into the roll bar, that would be really cool. Um, I was thinking maybe stacks up behind there, that would be cool. But the, this is what I came up with because it's simple and fast. And there's a couple of reasons I did this. Um, there was also recommendations to cover in the wheel well, and that involves work. And doing any other exhaust in this is also a lot of work. So instead, I'm just pointing the exhaust out the wheel well and then there's something in the wheel well and the exhaust is simple. Now, I just grabbed whatever's laying around in the shop. I gotta get it out from underneath the frame and then we'll just point it out from the wheel wells. Um, the reason I did this for now is because we might wanna turbo it later. If we're still underpowered, uh, we could throw some 92 injectors in there and then I can actually swap them around side to side and rather than pointing out, they'll be pointing in and then I can uh, put it up into the blower that, or the turbo that sits on top of the blower. That being said, if anybody has a turbo off of a 6V71, hit us up, we'll buy that off of you, because if you have it, we'll definitely put it on. In the meantime, I'll weld this up, and we'll throw them on, or one step closer to firing it up. Here we go. Okay, so, this was actually a leftover piece from Lyles. Um, so now they're an official sponsor of the tank. Because I had a piece laying around the shop. The rest is just whatever I had laying in the yard. I don't care. And Vince is going to be busy welding on the F350. So I don't need him wasting his talent on this thing. be 
need less resistance for the exhaust. You know, we got a lot of resistance coming up here. So we'll uh, allow a little extra to come here. When we, when we switch it, this will go on the opposite side. It'll curl nicely this way and then uh, feed the turbo which sits right in the valley. Um, I thought about flipping the manifolds upside down and having the exhaust just come straight out, but that didn't work either because it hits real estate in the back. So always something. You try and try and think, but you know, just... yeah, the threads are all euchred. I have to drill the holes out. Could tap them, but they're pretty messed up. Okay, so for the throttle control, I want to be able to use my foot throttle, and I went back to the video of when we found this V6 in the scrapyard and what we were doing to um, actually get it to run. And this was on the throttle, and, and it being off a generator, it was probably either um, off or, or on idle or full throttle. The idle, I think, was on the very top lever, and we had to push that in, and then the throttle was on this thing. So um, just grabbed a couple jumpers and make sure that this thing still worked. Um, there's no spring return on it, but I can put a spring on the lever, and if I go like this. So I'm just gonna put this on as the on-off. Um, that way I've got electronic control. Other, like, otherwise I'd have to have a cable. So before it was on the e-brake cable, now I can put it on the solenoid. It looks heavy duty enough that um, it, uh, it'll hold up. Now some of these solenoids are only temporary and, uh, and burn out if you use them constant, but I think this was a constant for the generator, so we should be safe there. Um, what that also allows me to do is I can put another toggle switch. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Don't yeah. touch those. <laughs> So what that also allows me to do is to put a toggle switch, like an interrupter, right where the handles are to tilt the truck up. So I can fire the truck up, get out of the truck, lift the truck up, put my safeties underneath, and then shut the truck off um, from the controls beside the truck. If there's an issue with we blow a hose or something stupid or the winch or something happens, we can always shut it off um, down below. So that's a much nicer setup for doing that. And then the throttle we grabbed a pto cable oh, oh, hold on and then for the throttle control i just went to princess auto and grabbed a bunch of pto cables um this one is i grabbed a couple different lengths just in case but uh this one should be long enough to be able to reach it uh from the through the firewall i can actually bolt this to the firewall hook that up to the throttle cable and then uh we've got working foot throttle it'll probably be a little bit stiff but uh that means that my little girls can't fire up the thing without me. <laughs> <laughs> the kids can't do it. Yeah. The, kids, the kids can't do it because there's no, no neutral safety on this one. So, easy peasy, here we go. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is Bigfoot competition here, isn't it? It is. Yeah. This is the oil in that. This engine's 30 years old. It's 30 years old oil? I don't know, but look how clear that is. Yeah, so it's pretty clear. Even, even like, 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 I think the engine's brand new. I need to figure out what position the, the transmission lever is in so I can run my cable and shift the transmission. And I forget, I had to watch the video. The one over here is the throttle, but I think that's the shutoff. And we had to push the handle in for the shutoff. Do you know the Detroit? No. I, no. I, I know you gotta take that rig to the intake. <laughs> Thanks, thanks, Scott. Does it really help? That's what she says. We can crank it over. Put a little leaf in it. You guys want to check for leaks or? Yes, Nothing no. Yet. <laughs> Nothing yet. Okay, ready? Yeah. Oh, we got we're smoke on this side. Smoke. Well, that's good. I think you need a gasket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. I just found it. So the exhaust's not restrictive. Oh, okay. <laughs> a little bit of water coming out. Yeah, I got to hit the face with water. I feel like Aaron. There's a lot of fuel coming out of this uh, pipe. No, that's just water. Oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, full throttle, Scott. Full? Yeah.
Okay, that's good. <laughs> there was a lot of water in there. I kind of gave it one little rev there, and that is it. That should be it. Whew, nice. I'm a little disappointed. I have it. I have stuff on the exhaust and um, a hood on top of the engine, but it's been outside for two years. There's a lot of water in there. Okay, don't don't pull on it yet. It should fire up. So the Vickers pump, I, like, it came on the other side on the engine, yeah. but that's a four cylinder. So what I did, because now it's spinning the other way, yeah, yeah. you have to flip the pump around. So I think now it was probably the right way and I made the pump backwards. Yeah, yeah. Well, I gotta see if oil is coming out of here. Pop it in here. That there is no oil coming out of there. idled down and then it, all of a sudden now it's super snappy so something was going on governor wise or whatever it just needs it needs a good run yeah but um i got no oil coming out of the hose so that means that pump is backwards um it shouldn't need a prime um and i actually knocked that hose off and it spilled atf all through my shop so i know that that hose is open <laughs> so we'll flip that pump around in the next video that's first start the next video will be the wiring where we actually start it from the cab, shut it off from the cab, make sure that the hydraulics are working, and then uh, you know, have to stick around for that. So, um, yeah, in the meantime, Kevin's rebuilding his transmission in the shop here, and I'm back on the F350, so good times all around.